You know, I believe really strongly that if you want to be successful at something, it's really important that you start with a clear sense of purpose. And the more complicated the endeavor is, the more important clarity of purpose becomes. And as complicated as web performance is, I think the purpose is actually really simple. It's about building great user experiences. And the thing I like about studying users is they keep you honest, right? Like they don't care about all of the complexities and everything that, that's going on in your day to day. They don't care how elegant that little piece of code that you shipped or whatever it was. They're just trying to do something that's really simple, like check the weather or buy something for a loved one or share a cool experience that they had online. And so if we're putting the user first, then every decision that we make, whether it's a piece of software that we're writing, an infrastructure decision that we're making, something that we're shipping to the point that was, that was made earlier, all should be done in service of the user. And if we're doing our jobs right, then all of that complexity is hidden from the user, and all they see is the simple, elegant outcome of what you did. And I think it's always really impressive when I look at companies who do a good job of this, who do a great job of distilling down the essence of why they're doing the things that they do. And earlier, back in April, Wikipedia had this really great tweet where they were hiring for a, a web performance engineer, and they pointed out that at Wikipedia's scale, if you shave just a tenth of a second off of the website load time for the pages on their site, what you've done, in essence, is you've given 617 years of time back to the people of Earth. I think that's awesome. It's a great way to capture the importance of what you're doing and bring a clear sense of purpose to what being a web performance engineer is like at Wikipedia. And so for us, we started thinking about how we might approach that, how we could actually take all of the different things that you do in web performance and distill that down into a clear sense of purpose. And what are the metrics that we might use to track that? Because we're an analytics company, so we always think about metrics. And you know, first, we looked at all of the existing metrics that were out there that seek to understand what the purpose is of doing all this performance work. And it turned out that we weren't happy with any of them, so we ended up inventing our own. But on the way there, we looked at all the ones that already existed, and we started with competitive benchmarks. So competitive benchmarks, everyone's seen these before. They've been around as long as web performance has been around, so for at least 15 years. And it's all about taking the raw speed of your site and stack ranking it against the raw speed of all the other sites that are in your peer group. So in that sense, to me, you know, it's kind of like if you go hiking, you wear running shoes when you're out in the, in the woods with your friends. Just in case you meet an angry bear in the woods, you may not be able to outrun the bear, but at least you can outrun your friends. And so you're looking at how you rank next to all of your peers. And what we end up doing is we end up taking websites and racing them. And that's interesting. And it's a good way to get a point across. But the problem with racing websites is what it's telling you is about your relationship to the competition. And just because you understand your relationship to the competition, that doesn't mean that you understand your relationship to your customers. And I think that understanding the relationship with your customers is so much more important. And I think the industry realized that, too, because in the mid-2000s, we created a metric called Aptex. And Aptex was all about moving past just studying your relationship with your competition and actually looking directly at customer engagement. And so in theory, that sounds great. And the way Aptex works is it takes everyone who comes to your website and puts them in one of three buckets. They're either satisfied with the performance of the website, they tolerated the experience that they got, or they were frustrated by what they saw. And it's all based off of this value called T, right? So T is the key to Aptex. If, if the user experience was faster than T, if the load time was, was lower than T is, then that was a satisfied user. And if it's greater than T, then they're either tolerating or they're frustrated, depending on you know, how much greater than T you actually were. The problem with Aptex is it doesn't tell you anything about what T is. As important as T is to Aptex, it's an absolute mystery. They don't define any of it. And so, you know, in the years since Aptex came out, fortunately, we've gotten a lot better at understanding T, right? We no longer put people in just three buckets. We actually put users in lots of buckets. Everyone's seen this type of chart before, where you've got users and everyone who has a two-second load time is grouped together, the three-second load times are grouped together, and so on. And within each of those groups, what we do is we take an engagement metric, like conversion rate in this case, and we work out what that is for each group and then study how it changes according to whether the user's experience is fast or slow. And that gives us some interesting insights, right? It tells us, for example, that the ideal speed of this site is 2.4 seconds, that the worst case scenario is six seconds, and that users are three times more engaged at the ideal speed than they are at the poor speed. 
problem with this and the pitfall that people fall into a lot of times is that they let these things get locked in time, especially when these metrics are produced by big companies like Walmart or Microsoft or Google, and they become internet lore. And the reality is that user expectations change over time. They change over time with everything, and web performance and, and in other things too, I think sometimes it's useful to study how expectations change by looking at industries outside of web performance like travel. And you know, in 1876, the Transcontinental Express made the trip from New York to the San Francisco Bay Area in 83 hours, 39 minutes. It was a record-breaking trip. It was big news of the day. Now, on Monday, I took the exact same trip in the opposite direction from the Bay Area to JFK, except I took a United Airlines flight. It only took me five and a half hours, and yet I guarantee you somebody got off that flight Monday morning and complained about how long the flight was. And that's because user expectations of performance change over time. And so if we're going to create a good replacement metric for how we're doing overall with user engagement, it needs to satisfy those three requirements. It needs to put the user at the center. It needs to tell you what T is. And it needs to adapt to changing user expectations as we evolve over time. And that's why we created the Consumer Performance Index. The Consumer Performance Index, the way this works is you come to the website. It's sosta.com slash CPI. Put in the URL of your website, and it's going to grade you on a score of 0 to 100 according to how good of a job you're doing at meeting user expectations. So it's not a stack rank of raw speeds of you versus other sites in your peer group. It's not comparing you to your competitors. It's comparing you to what people expect of your website and how it should perform for them. And the reason that we're able to do this is because we collect so much information about users in the course of doing our business at Sosta. In this particular model, we put in 8 billion user experiences across every conceivable browser in every country in the world, all told over 200 years' worth of time with people spending waiting on websites to load. And in every single one of those cases, we looked at two components to each one of those 8 billion experiences, how long they waited and how that waiting affected their behavior. And so that's what enables us to create this metric. And what I would leave you with, what I, what I would encourage you to do when you get back to work on Monday, is not just to be a participant in web performance, but actually to take a leadership position in performance when you get back to work. Take the things, the ideas that you learn at Velocity and apply them. Start conversations about how you can create a better user experience using web performance. And consider using the CPI as a benchmark to track how you're doing. So again, the URL for that is sosa.com slash CPI. And if you're interested in talking with us, we're outside over at booth 51. Thanks, everyone.